Subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so that you never miss any video lessons from Rao's IS Study Circle. Join the official Telegram channel of Rao's IS Study Circle to stay updated and get all the materials on Telegram. The link to the channel can be found in the description box. Hello and welcome to Daily Prelims Practice. Here, we take up MCQs based on important articles and news from the Hindu and the Indian Express. Topics that we are going to discuss are displayed on your screen. Let's begin the discussion. The first question in today's discussion is related to this news article. This was appeared in the Hindu newspaper. It is related to the tussle between Kerala governor and the Kerala state government. If you are following the newspaper regularly, then you might understood that withholding assent to the University Laws Amendment Act 2022 and Kerala Lok Ayuk Amendment Act 2022 is the main reason behind the tug of war between governor and the state government. Now before taking up the practice question, if you look at the previous year question papers, UPSC has generally asked questions related to the powers of governor, his or appointment, constitutional provisions, etc. in the prelims examination. For example, look at this question. This question was asked in the year 2018. Now, let's look at this practice question. The question is related to the constitutional provisions related to the governor. In this first statement, if you look at, it's about the council of ministers shall be collectively responsible to the governor of the state. It is an incorrect statement because according to article 164, the Council of Ministers shall be collectively responsible to the Legislative Assembly of the state. Now, if you look at the second statement, every bill passed in a Legislative Assembly has to be sent to the Governor. Here, this statement is correct. Because according to Article 200, every bill passed in an assembly has to be sent to the governor, after which he has four options. First one is to assent to the bill. Second, withhold assent. Third, reserve the bill for the consideration of the president or return the bill to the legislature. And the last one is asking it to reconsider the bill or an aspect of it. Now, statement first is incorrect and statement two is correct. So our correct answer is option B, that is two only. Now the next question of today's discussion is from the Hindu newspaper. It is related to the recent controversy on the imposition of Hindi language. Some of you might know that reported recommendation of the parliamentary committee on official language to use Hindi as the medium of instruction in central institutions of higher education in Hindi-speaking states and regional languages in other states has once again ignited controversy. In the previous year questions also we have seen that UPSC has asked the question on various classical languages, aid schedules, etc. And this question is from the year 2015. It was about the classical language status. Now, in this practice question, we have to identify the correct statements with respect to the Parliamentary Committee on Official Language. The first statement is, the committee is chaired by the Prime Minister of India. This statement is incorrect as it is chaired by the Union Home Minister. It is also important to understand that the Committee of Parliament on Official Language was set up in year 1976. Under Section 4 of the Official Languages Act 1963, the mandate of the committee is to review the progress made in the use of Hindi for official purposes and to make recommendations to increase the use of Hindi in official communications. Now, let's come to the second statement. It is composed of 15 MPs from Lok Sabha and 15 MPs from Rajya Sabha. Again, this statement is wrong as it is composed of 20 MPs from Lok Sabha and 10 MPs from Rajya Sabha. So here we have to find out the correct statements. So both statement 1 is incorrect and statement 2 is incorrect. So our correct answer is D. 
that is neither one nor two. Further, let's take the next question, which is based on an article about the Global Multidimensional Poverty Index 2022. And one of the important key takeaway from this article is that the improvement in multidimensional poverty index for India has significantly contributed to the decline in poverty in South Asia and it is for the first time that it is not the region with the highest number of poor people. Now, as you know, UPSC has asked multiple questions on various poverty indices methodologies to measure poverty. This question is from the year 2012. And if you look at this previous year question, the topic is same. That is that they had asked on the parameters used to calculate the multidimensional poverty index. Now, in this practice question, we have to identify the correct statements regarding multidimensional poverty index 2022. Our first statement is, it is published by the World Bank. This statement is incorrect as you have seen in the previous year question, the report is produced by the United Nations Development Program, that is UNDP, and the Oxford Poverty and Human Development Initiative. Another important fact is that it was first launched in 2010. Now, let's come to the second statement. Standard of living has not taken as an indicator to construct global MPI. Again, this statement is wrong because standard of living is an indicator to construct global MPI. The global MPI constructs a deprivation profile of each household and person through 10 indicators spanning health, education and standard of living and includes both indices as well as intensity of poverty. All indicators are equally weighted within each dimension. You should also know that MPI ranges from 0 to 1 and the higher values imply higher poverty. Now here, statement first is incorrect and statement two is also incorrect. So our correct answer is D, neither one nor two. Now let's take up our next question of today's discussion from the Hindu newspaper. It is related to the new One Nation, One Fertilizer scheme. UPSC has asked multiple questions on various government schemes and this question is from the year 2018. It was about Pradhan Mantri Kaushal Vikas Yojana. Now, in this practice question, we have to identify the benefits of newly launched One Nation, One Fertilizer scheme. The first option is uniform branding of fertilizers. This is correct because under the scheme, all subsidized soil nutrients, urea, diammonium phosphate, that is DAP, muriate of potash and NPK will be marketed under the single brand Bharat across the nation. With the launch of this scheme, India will have a common bag design across the country like Bharat urea, Bharat DAP, etc. It is also important to know that under the new scheme, Companies are allowed to display their name, brand, logo and other relevant product information only on one-third space of their bags. On the remaining two-third space, the Bharat brand and Pradhan Mantri Bharatiya Jan Urvarak Pariyojana will be shown. Now, a second option is that it will lead to a drastic decrease in fertilizer subsidy. And the third one is it will lead to a substantial decrease in urea imports. Now, both these options are incorrect. The scheme is not going to either drastically decrease the fertilizer subsidy or decrease urea imports. So we have to find out the correct benefit of newly launched One Nation One Fertilizer Scheme and the correct answer is only one, that is option A. Further, let's take up the next question based on this article and it is about how Reserve Bank of India's tokenization of cards will prevent online card fraud. Now, before answering practice question, let us see what is tokenization. Tokenization is the process of replacing the customer's account number with a unique alphanumeric token, which can be used for transactions. The token will act as a card at point of sale terminals instead of the card details. The token allows payment to be processed without exposing actual account details. Hence, the online portals will not be allowed to store card details. Now, let us see how it works. Before online shopping, or booking tickets, 
customer enter card details and opt for tokenization with the merchant for example amazon flipkart the merchant forwards it to the respective banks and card networks like visa mastercard rupay etc request for token now token gets generated and is sent back to the merchant merchant would be allowed to save only the token and not the card details customer can complete the transaction using the cvv or otp next time the customer need not enter the card details the customer needs to select the safe token with the merchant to complete the transaction now before taking up the practice question let me tell you that why it is important because upsc has asked multiple questions related on rbi and its new initiative this question is from the year 2017 it is about the consequences of implementing the unified payments interface that is upi now let's come to the practice question in which among the following ways tokenization of cards would benefit the customer here you have to find out the correct answer using the given code first statement is the customer can link a single token to their multiple bank accounts for making payments this statement is incorrect as one token is limited to just one card and one merchant for instance if you have say an icic credit card tokenized on amazon then this token will be applicable only on amazon you would have to generate different token for the same card on flipkart now come to the second statement the card details would not be stored with the merchant hence tokenization this statement is correct as merchant would not be allowed to save only the token and not the card details third statement tokenization allows payment to be processed without exposing actual account details this statement is also correct now here we have to find out the correct answer so our option would be b that is 2 and 3 only further Let's take up the next question based on this article from the Hindu. It is about small saving scheme. UPSC has asked multiple questions related to government scheme. This question is from the year 2022. Now, in this practice question, we have to identify the correct statements regarding small saving scheme. Now here, statement first is the money raised through the small saving scheme such as post office deposits public provident fund etc get deposited into the consolidated fund of india this statement is incorrect as all small savings collections are credited to the national small savings fund that is nssf in the public account of india now let's come to the second statement the interest rate on the small saving scheme is completely market determined again this statement is incorrect as interest rates are reset every quarter based on the gsec yields of the previous 3 months a certain amount of nssf is invested in the central and state government securities another important fact is the fund is administered by the department of economic affairs under ministry of finance So here we have to identify the correct statements so our answer is D neither one nor two Now let's take the next question based on this article from the Indian Express and it says park likely to exit FATF's grey list Now before answering practice question let's see what is financial action task force that is FATF Financial Action Task Force is the global money laundering and terrorist financing watchdog. Another important fact is that it is an intergovernmental body that sets international standards that aim to prevent these illegal activities and the harm they cause to society. Now as you know, FATF has two lists. One is grey list and the another one is black list. Grey list composed of countries that are considered safe haven for supporting terror funding and money laundering total 12 countries are there in this list including our neighbors pakistan and sri lanka next is black list this composed of countries known as non cooperative countries or territories these countries support terror funding and money laundering activities in 2019 fatf has blacklisted north korea and iran over terror financing Why we have taken question based on financial action task force because 
Initiatives taken by important organizations like World Bank, IMF have been a recurring theme in the past year papers. For example, this question on global infrastructure facility came in 2017. Now, let's come to the practice question. Here, we have to identify incorrect statements regarding Financial Action Task Force. Let's come to the first statement. It was established by the G20 summit that was held in Washington in 2008. This statement is incorrect as in response to mounting concern over money laundering, the Financial Action Task Force on Money Laundering was established by the G7 summit that was held in Paris in 1989. Now, let's come to the next statement. India is a founding member of Financial Action Task Force. Again, this statement is incorrect as India became an observer at FATF in 2006. Since then, it had been working towards full-fledged membership. On June 25, 2010, India was taken in as the 34th country member of FATF. Currently, it has 39 members. Now, let's come to the last statement. Combating money laundering along with terror financing were its mandate since its inception. Again, this statement is incorrect as FATF's role in combating terror financing became prominent after 1911 terror attacks in the US. In 2001, its mandate expanded to include terrorism financing in addition to money laundering. In April 2012, it added efforts to counter the financing of proliferation of weapons of mass destruction. Now, all three statements are incorrect and here we have to identify the incorrect statements. So, our answer is D. 1, 2 and 3. That's all for today. Stay tuned for more such updates.